The apartment is inside the Barbican Estate, which was built between 1965 and 1976 in central London. It contains about 2,000 flats of different sizes, different modules. The Barbican Estate has multiple arts facilities, so there's a concert hall, there's an exhibition hall. Within the estate there are two private gardens, there's a large pond. The Barbican Centre was Grade 2 listed in 2001. Surprisingly, it was voted one of London's most ugliest buildings in 2003. So it's a bit of a hate or love building. Architects like it, designers like it. I guess because of its brutalist architecture, it's not really to everyone's taste. The total area of the studio apartment is 41 square metres. The apartment was pretty much in its layout as its original state. It was just one big open space. There was no subdivision, it was just a storage cupboard, a kitchen and a bathroom. We introduced a large central piece of furniture that basically created then the subdivision of areas. When you enter the room, you enter into the kitchen area and into the, the living space and then you sort of walk around the central unit in order to get to the bedroom. The living area is the part of the flat closest to the window and the balcony. At night, you can draw the curtain in front of the sleeping area. And additionally, you can also draw the curtain in front of the windows. So if you do have occasionally guests, they can sleep sort of in the living room and there's still a, a degree of division between you. The central unit is it's partially um, storage space for other sort of knickknacks you have in the house also for display of nice vases and objects. It also hides the, the washing machine. Also is partially wardrobe. And it's one coherent element which is, it uses the same materials as the kitchen and the bathroom. So there's very few added materials within the house. So you kind of have a degree of fluidity between the different zones. Kitchen design, it's very personal. For example, they don't cook an awful lot. The owner decided that they preferred not to have a dishwasher, for example. So it's all relatively minimal. So they have a small hob, a small fridge, and the sink is furthest tucked away so that when you're sitting in the living area, whilst you see the kitchen, it looks more like the extension of the living room rather than a kitchen with a lot of mess. The sleeping area inside the flat is backed onto the bathroom. So there is a, there's a panel that slides across and opens up a bookshelf. And if it slides across the other side, it basically screens the bathroom to get some natural light from the large window at the front. So the bathroom is remained in its place. It's fundamentally remained its shape. The, the main intervention was that we created a window into the bedroom. Whenever you use the bathroom, the least time you spend on the toilet. So the toilet is actually hidden away into a box. So you can use it to get ready, to dry yourself, so you can sit on top of it without sitting on the toilet. It's like a old fashioned kind of wooden seat with a lid on it. This was built in the 50s, 60s. The need for living was very different than it is now. Taking an existing space and just give it a more up-to-date function, I suppose, where architects are relevant is they really need to understand what the client wants, what your client needs, and to turn it into the perfect space for them. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our Never Too Small channel by clicking on the logo and the notification bell to receive updates on our latest episode.